Hi, Robin here. This is Multiple Regression 2. This is a practical supplement to Chapter 2 of Statistics at Square 2 by Michael Campbell. And we've been looking specifically at his example on pages 18 and 19. We've been looking at how to do it in SPSS, R Commander and R. So if you remember, in Multiple Regression we have one or more input variables, but a single interval ratio outcome variable. And we use this data set, which we're going to use again. So we have a set of variables, some of which are interval ratio variables, and we class dead space as our outcome variable. But we've also got height and age as other interval ratio variables. And we've got two nominal variables. And we can classify the various models we can make from this data set into various types of multiple regression. And one type of multiple regression is also called analysis covariance, where you have one or more input variables which are nominal. And in the example below, you'll see we've got dead space as the outcome variable, but we have asthma as an input variable, and asthma is a nominal variable, and we also have height, which is an interval ratio variable. So that type of design is also called an ANCOVA because we have these two types of variables in it. If we had an interaction term as well, would it be called an ANCOVA? Well, um, I don't think it would be, but it's a more interesting design. ANCOVA was something that people used to use um, several years ago. It's still used, but if we've got this interaction term as well, um, it means it's not really strictly an ANCOVA design. But interestingly enough, we do use this interaction term to test to see if the ANCOVA model is valid. Obviously, if our interaction term is significant, other words, it's not equal to zero, the parameter value, then it's more complicated than a simple ANCOVA design. Now, the best way to explain this is by looking at some graphs. So there's our simple ANCOVA model, with the asthma being the covariate. And here is what we get when we graph the data with this model. What it is doing is modeling the various levels of asthma. Asthma equals yes, asthma equals no. And we get a regression line for each. But it is assuming that regression lines are parallel. Of course, the question is, is that a valid model for our data? Just because we can actually model it using statistics doesn't mean it's actually valid. It might be a more complicated model where the actual lines are not parallel, such as this. Now, which fits the data better? Well, that's where we have statistical analysis to help us. So we can actually work out a interaction term, which is basically in allowing these two regression lines to vary. And we can see if that is significant. If that is significant, then the model with the non-power lines is a better fit for our data. Um, if we do find that the interaction term is significant, that is, it fits our data better than the two parallel lines, then Regardless of what the probabilities are for asthma and height on their own, we ignore those p-values and we just use them in the model because obviously we can't have an interaction term without actually what's called the main effects of asthma and height as well. So let's go on with the analysis now. So here we are in SPSS and the first thing I'd like to do is draw a quick scatter plot. So we go to graphs, legacy dialogues, scatter dot and simple scatter define I mean, you know dead space is going to be the y-axis it doesn't have to be but it, it's easy to put the dependent variable on the y-axis and then we're going to have height as our first independent variable and we can divide them up by asthma status so we set markers by asthma click OK so here is our scatter plot. It's rather difficult to see, for me anyway, which are the asthmatics and which are the non-asthmatics. So if we just go into the chart, double click on it, and then double click on one of the markers. We wanted to actually choose just one of the set of the markers, which we've done there by choosing the no category. Now we can choose a different look. So we can change the fill to be color black so and apply that and now we can see which is which let's close that down close that and now we can see so those who don't have asthma seem to have a higher dead space compared to those that do have asthma asthmatics have a lower dead space measure given their height 
Now, we would like to add some aggression lines to this. We can't at the moment because we need to get the coefficients for the aggression lines and we get that from carrying out the regression analysis. So if we go to Analyze, Regression, Linear, and we put in dead space into dependent variable, and we've got two independent variables, height and asthma. We go to statistics, we just want to make sure we have the 95% confidence interval chosen, yes. And we have part and partial correlations chosen as well, so we can get some idea of how each parameter, how each variable contributes to the model uniquely. Click continue, OK, and here are the results. So we have an R value of 0.91, R square 0.82, adjusted R square 0.799. So that's basically saying that 79% of the variance found in the data can be attributed to the model. Then we have a P value here, this is this F value, and that is indirectly related to this R squared value. So that's saying that our model, taking the two parameters we've employed in using the model, designing the model, it's better than just taking the mean value and fitting the data to that. The residuals are lower than would be expected if we just taken the mean value and fitted the data. So, looking at the actual estimates of our parameter values, we have a height here of 0.845. That means for every one unit increase in dead space, height increases by 0.84. And similarly, We've got here an asthma level. This is slightly different because this is to do with the difference between the two parallel regression lines in this model. And because we coded asthmatics as equaling 1, that is saying those with an asthma value of 1 are 16 less units than those with an asthma value of 0. So asthmatics, asthmatics have a lower dead space value and non asthmatics. You always need to remember which category you coded zero to work out this value from the baseline. Now we can use these values here, these beta values, to put into our linear regression equations into our chart and produce the two parallel regression lines. If we go back to the chart, here we are, and open it up again, and then if we look up here, we have an option saying add reference line from equation. Click on that, and it produces a reference line that's pretty useless, along with an equation that's pretty useless. And we type in the equation that we want to use. So if we just review where we got those two values from, the 0.845 is the height parameter estimate, and the minus 46 is the constant estimate, where the line cuts the x equals 0 axis. So apply that. And this is what our regression line looks like now. But now we want to add the other regression line, and we know that that is 46 plus minus 16. So we just close that, and then do the same again. So we know the slope is exactly the same, 0.845. And this time it's minus bracket the value we had before, 46.29 plus the difference between the two, which is 16.81, and click Apply. And we can change the look of that line just by clicking on the Lines tab there. Change the weight, make it a bit thicker. Add some dots, and change the colour to dark red. Click Apply, close it. Now we have our two parallel covariate value lines for the two levels of the covariate. Now, of course, we want to know, is that a sensible fit? Well, looking at our output, it looked sensible, didn't it? Because we had 79% of our variability in our values to account for by that equation. But we need to create an interaction term to check this is a valid model, that these lines being parallel is sensible. So, to do that, we go to Analyze. And this time, we don't choose Linear Regression. We want to actually add an interaction term, so we choose General Linear Model, Univariate, General Linear Model, Univariate. And we know dead space is a dependent variable. And then we're actually going to class asthma as a fixed factor and covariate as height. If you do it the other way around and 
SPSS takes a dicky turn. And then we click on model. And now we want to actually create the terms here. So we click on custom, put in each value separately. And now we want to create an interaction term as well. So we choose both by using the control key. And it's notice already choose the interaction there. Click return. So now we have the three values in. And it's a type 3 sum of squares. Don't bother about that at the moment. Just make sure it's type 3 sum of squares. Click continue. And then OK. And here are our values. So we can see that the asthma height interaction is 0 0.009, which we class as significant because it's below the 0 0.05 value. And that means regardless of what these values are here, the significance values for our parameter estimates, we would leave them in the model along with the interaction term. And we can say that this model fits our data better than the parallel line and that is covariance model. Another aspect we can consider to help gauge if the model's improved with the interaction term is to look at the adjusted R squared. For a model with the interaction term, we've got an R squared value there, 0.885 compared to our previous model of 0.79. So the model only counts for 79% there, so 80% 0.799 to 89%. So we've got from 80 to 89%, we could say, 9% increase in the model's efficiency of estimating from our data. The yarn lasting, and we want to draw now the regression lines that are non-parallel. How can you do that very easily? If we go back to our scatter diagram there we are click that okay we get to another one that's got no lines on it and this time we just choose this one option here that says add fit line as subgroups and we can say linear which is already chosen for us close and there are our two non-parallel lines reflecting the interaction term along with the main effects in the equation. So we've just carried out a multiple regression analysis considering height and asthma status as the two input variables or called independent variables in some contexts. The type of analysis, because it consisted of one nominal variable, is called an ANCOVA, an analysis of covariance traditionally. It's exactly the same what we've done here in regression. In the next YouTube video, we're going to be quickly looking at the same analysis in R, Commander and R. Even though you might not be interested in doing it in those two packages, it's worth watching because I'll probably mention some other salient points while we're going through the output. Bye.